Hey guys, King Gath here, and in this video we're going to go over the taxes and maintenance cost systems. So let's start with taxes. Taxes are enabled by default in some settlements, and they can be disabled if you think they're uh, too much of a benefit. But essentially what they do is give you a certain number of caps per day based on the number and level of plots you have. And those caps will be deposited into the workbenches of each of your settlements. And you can determine how many caps per day a particular plot is giving by accessing its plaque. And it will be in the lower right-hand corner. And this, in for commercial, it combines the income as well, because there is a small portion of income you get from commercial plots in the form of a cut of their sales, and then you also get the taxes from some settlements. So that's combined into a single field so you can understand how much money those are making you. Now, on top of that, there's another way you can check your combined total cap output per day from some settlements, and that's if you go to the supply safe on the city manager's desk, you will, or city planner's desk rather, you will find there is a tax and vendor income and it shows you the total caps per day. So if you're not playing with maintenance costs, that's effectively all you need to know. And it can uh, cut the video here. You, you have your knowledge. Just know you go every day to your workbenches and you will find some extra caps there thanks to playing with some settlements. Now, if you're playing with maintenance costs, the taxes are highly related to your maintenance costs in the fact that uh, they are used to pay those maintenance costs initially. So that is why we're combining those two things into one video. So if you're interested in maintenance costs or are playing with it and want to know more about how it works, that's what we're going to cover now. So the idea of maintenance costs is simple. It adds a one cap cost per day to certain generators, or certain power generators, and certain uh, defense generators. And uh, we're going to go over those now. So the generators that are covered are everything that isn't a windmill. So if you go into your uh, power section under generators in the vanilla plus the DLC stuff, that would include the small, medium, and large generators, as well as the fusion generator. It also includes most generators by uh, added by mods that are not flagged in the same way that the windmill generator is flagged. There's a certain key that it looks for in the creation kit, and if it finds that, then it doesn't cost any maintenance costs, and we'll, we'll explain why in a moment. Um, so the general rule of thumb is, is just add up your total power in from these generators, and that will uh, determine your cap cost per day for power. And then with turrets, it's going, or with defense rather, I should say, uh, it's going to cost the defensive score of the turret and it ignores the cost on traps and man powered defenses. So these guard posts in vanilla, and I'm sure there are some things from other mods that also would not incur a cost, but anything that doesn't have an assigned settler to it. So turrets uh, will, will definitely cost you maintenance. Whereas traps, which are one shot, these will not because you're already spending the uh, resources to have to reset them. So those don't have a regular maintenance cost. Now, the maintenance costs are designed to solve a couple of problems in the game. One is that there's no penalty whatsoever to spamming power or defense. And it, in fact, it makes most sense if you want to be most economical with your resources to spam turrets as your sole defense and never use things like martial plots uh, or the man-powered guard posts. They just don't make sense. You're better off using those settlers to provide additional resources by being assigned to things. So the maintenance costs aim to solve that. And the, and it, the problem is unique to power and defense because with water and food there's a built-in penalty of you're encouraging more raids by having an excessive amount of them and you're also requiring higher defenses by having more food and water and so those kind of are all tied together in a way that prevent those from being spammed needlessly whereas power and defense lacked any such uh, thing to keep them in check and you would just be best off just spamming tons and tons of turrets and it's not particularly interesting. Uh, so by doing this, we also unlock the potential for you to kind of have your settlement evolve over time. So maybe early in the game when you don't have a lot of caps or your tax income is low, you can stick to the things that have no costs in them. So things like these windmill generators or man-powered defenses, such as the martial plots or the guard posts. And then as you gain more caps and your settlements become more evolved, you can start to invest in things like turrets. So then you have more of a gradual progression of technology in your settlements instead of just early game spamming everything. So that was kind of the draw behind it. Now you can find out what your total maintenance costs are in the same way as the taxes. You can go to the supply safe and you will find that the fuel and ammo costs there, that's what we represent by a maintenance cost, because that's kind of the immersive explanation for why you would have those maintenance costs on them. And uh, that 
shows your caps per day. So the way that those are handled is that at the end of each day, your maintenance costs are subtracted from your tax and vendor income, and that determines your total uh, output for the day. So in our case right now, we would gain plus nine caps per day. Now, if we were instead to build a few more turrets, so we'll go ahead and do that now so you can see exactly what I'm talking about here. So if we build a few more here, and you'll notice that on my HUD, you're gonna see a little change if you look at the bottom left there. Uh, but as we build more turrets, we're adding more maintenance costs. So I'm going to build just three turrets, and then we'll show you what happens. So uh, the first thing you might have noticed is the little star started moving on the HUD as I built more things, and uh, it ultimately should go pretty far to the left there. And essentially what the the maintenance cost, or that little meter down there is showing you is the if it's to the left of the little center line, it means you have, you're have you incurring a cost every day on your settlement. And if it's to the right, it means you're gaining a profit. So the goal ultimately is to try and keep it centered or eventually off to the right. But if it's, if it's all the way to the right or very far to the right, it means you can afford to start investing in some more power and uh, defense objects, which will eventually free up your settlers, especially with defense, where if you had built a lot of martial plots in the early game, you could start freeing up those settlers to do things like more industrial work or something more interesting for you, and then free up and by building more turrets to use up some of your caps that you're gaining from the, uh, uh, the tax income that you're not spending on maintenance costs currently. So if we go back to the supply safe, you'll see that we now have a 20 cap cost per day. So I built the three turrets and I also have a medium generator down running a uh, water purifier right now. So that's the total of the 20 caps per day. So what's going to happen here is at the end of the day, I'm going to generate a deficit of six caps. So the idea of the deficit is if you don't pay that, then your your stuff will start to break down over time. So there's a couple of ways you can handle that. You can deposit caps yourself, and that will allow those deficits to be paid. And if you have extra caps in, so if I deposit caps right now, and actually I don't actually have any caps because this is a fresh character that I just uh, TGM to build all this stuff. Uh, but if you basically, if you deposit caps here and you are going to generate a deficit for that day, it will spend out of your current surplus. So let's say I donated 100 caps right now, my surplus would become 100. And then at the end of the day, since I have, I would be six caps over in my maintenance costs, then it would subtract six, leaving me with 94 surplus for that day. So essentially it would pay that down from there. And then when it ran out and you started hitting that deficit, your things would start to break apart until you came back in and deposited enough caps to pay for the, to pay for your deficit and also to generate a little bit of a surplus for future uses. So uh, the, the deficit, if you don't pay that, event, your stuff will start breaking every day, and then eventually it will get to the point where if your deficit gets too high, you will have all of your generators and turrets break every time you come back to your settlement, they'll all be broken and you'll have to go through and repair them. And you'll be able to find which ones are broken because they will have smoke coming off of them, so it's a good way to track those down. So the idea there is to balance it out and to kind of get you to start your early game when you're not making a lot of caps with some of the lower tech stuff or using manpower. And then eventually as you get more rich and you have tons of extra caps and your settlements are generating tons of taxes, then you can switch over to using more turrets and higher end technology like fusion generators. Now for power, there's one other option that you can use that does not incur a maintenance cost aside from just those windmill generators, and those are plots that generate power. Now there's only, a, in the base of Sim Settlements and its add-on pack, or sorry, its expansions, the only way to get power is through the tech tree and in Industrial Revolution, but there are many add-on packs that add power options as well. So using manpower to generate things through plot to generate power and defenses is a way to get around the maintenance costs, and that's intentional. We want the cost to be that you're actually investing a settler uh, because those tend to be the actual limiter in the game since you can only really have so many settlers before your game either becomes unstable or if you're using the vanilla options of having charisma lock it down it's actually a hard cap so your settler limit to me when I balance this game is heavily uh, the influencer in how this is kind of set up is that we know that you're only going to have you know, between usually most people have between 15 and, and 25 settlers and those of you who are cheating things to get past that probably are going to be capped around 40 or 45 before the game just becomes unstable so those to me are the true limited resource and that is why there is no maintenance cost when you're using a plot to generate those particular resources. 
So there is one other thing to cover with maintenance costs and taxes, and those are the tax options. So these are available even if you're not playing with maintenance costs, but I highly recommend leaving them alone unless you're playing with maintenance costs because they're heavily balanced around the idea of maintenance costs. And if you start turn tinkering with these, they are basically just giant cheat codes. So if you change the rates on any of these, and note for those of you not using MCM, these options are available in the holotape as well. Uh, but essentially, if you change these rates, you can affect various things. So you can, if you check over them, you'll see uh, in MCM, and if you click on them in the holotape, it will show you this information as well. But you can see agricultural tax rates affect production and happiness. So if you were to reduce the tax rates, you would increase production and happiness. Whereas if you increase your tax rates, you will reduce production and happiness. And then you can also turn them off, and that will have an even more pronounced positive effect on production and happiness or leave them normal which will leave production alone and the happiness benefit will be untouched so normal it doesn't affect any of the ratings these are the ratings you'd expect from some settlements and then if you reduce or increase these tax rates uh, you will make it easier for yourself to play with maintenance costs but you will cause yourself uh, hits on production and happiness so it's a relatively simplistic system you'll be able to figure out the numbers very quickly uh, most of these numbers should be uh, posted on the wiki if they were if they're not please comment below and I'll make sure that we make that a priority to get those up there. I'm fairly certain they're up there though because somebody's people have been asking for these for or had been asking for these for quite a while uh, after we released this uh, maintenance and tax system, which was way back at the beginning of uh, Rise of the Commonwealth. Uh, so over a year, well over a year ago now. So basically tweaking with these can buy you more taxes to cover those maintenance costs at the expense of various things. So that's uh, kind of a, gives you a lot of a play in that regard. Now, uh, one of the things that uh, the taxes are balanced around to make things more interesting, more difficult, is that some of the plots that are less important to the production of your settlement, so recreational and commercial, are much heavier tax generators. Whereas the things that are key to your settlement survival, like agricultural and uh, martial, will generate almost no taxes or I think in Marshall Marshall's case they actually generate no taxes with the idea being that they would actually be a tax cost to you so uh, that makes it so you have kind of a balanced system in play with your taxes and it just makes the whole system a little more interconnected so that you have to build certain plots at different times in order to cover your various needs and just adds a little extra layer of complexity so maintenance costs is definitely not for everybody uh, but for those of you who are into scarcity gameplay like balancing out more mechanics uh, it definitely adds a lot to that. Now, if uh, if you find that maintenance costs is too simplistic or too advanced, like I said, it's totally optional. And unless you chose the hardcore settings during the startup wizard, it's actually disabled by default. All right, guys, I hope that clarifies the taxes and maintenance cost system. And uh, definitely stay tuned for additional videos. We'll continue to put out these tutorials and get you guys more and more educated on all the ins and outs of Sim Settlements. <laughs>